Thank you for tuning in to our Sunday service for Bethlehem Temple Church of Albany, located at 2516D Dawson Road in the Largo Plaza. We pray that the word will be a blessing to your life. If you feel so led to sow, the ways to give are located on the screen. God bless you, and thank you again for tuning in. Let's look at uh, let's look at Hebrews. Man. We're going to look at a few places. Let's look at Hebrews. Oh, keep playing. Mm, just keep playing for now. Let's look at Hebrews. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 6. Yeah. Ooh. What music does, it, it sustains the moment. When you go into a moment, you go into a place with God, what the music does, it, it holds that moment. Sometimes when you stop the music, the moment leaves you before it should. <laughs> so sometimes you have to hold the music to hold the moment. Amen. So in Hebrews chapter 6, um, Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, uh, he magnify your name, glorify your name, oh God. There's a scripture that says, whose faith follow? And it seems like it's hiding from me. No, that's it. No, this is good right here. Uh, Hebrews 6 and 12. Uh, let's look at the verse 11. All right. In verse 11, it says, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end, and that ye be not slothful. Everybody say, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry now. Okay. I'll say, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy now. All right? But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. All right? Let's look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. John chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Oh. John chapter 6 verse 5 and 6 it says and when Jesus was lift uh, uh, when Jesus then lift up his eyes he saw a great company come unto him he said unto Philip whence shall we buy bread that these may eat verse 6 and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what he would do amen uh, let's look at uh, Luke chapter 22 verse 31 through 34 Luke 22 oh, oh, oh. Mm. Luke, Luke chapter 22 verse 31 through 34 and the Lord said Simon Simon behold Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, that is uh, Peter said, uh, Simon, Peter said unto Jesus, and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both to prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter. Now, now he was calling him Simon in verse 31. He said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not, shall not crow this day before that thou shalt twice deny that thou knowest me. Isn't that interesting? Today I want to talk about knowing faith. 
So, of course, in this month, we've been talking about belief system. Today, I want to talk about, for just a short time, not a long time, I want to talk about knowing your faith. Knowing your faith. All right? All right. So, there are three scriptures that we went to that um, just bring some light into how God want us to um, work within what God is trying to do when it comes to us becoming um, the type of believers that he called us to be, right? And so you have this scripture in John chapter 6, in verse 6, where Jesus is uh, going into the midst of feeding the disciples or feeding the multitude. And in verse 6, ask them in verse 5, where shall we get bread for these people to eat? Y'all see that? And then in verse 6, he said, and this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Now, why is this scripture significant? Because it's important for us if we're going to work with God, it's important a of the maturity process a part of the the belief system process is us getting to know our faith everybody say get to know your faith yeah it's important for us to understand what our faith can do what God has tailored our faith to accomplish when God was uh, talking to me about this in the middle of the night um, I began to think about all of these scriptures. I began to think about what I'm doing, what God would call me to do, what God would put on my heart to do. And I began to think about all these scriptures. And in the midst of it, I'm listening to my son uh, up in the middle of the night uh, making noise. And but I didn't get angered. I got uh confident it was as if something was saying your faith was tailored for this type of environment and so a part of developing when we understand our the belief system that god has given us is he uh has not put us in any scenario that our faith is not already able to deal with. Our faith can handle the thing that we haven't faced yet. And so when Jesus was in a training mode, he was doing what he said in Hebrews chapter 6. He began to say, whose faith follow? Everybody say, whose faith follow? All right. And why, why are we saying that? Because... You, God will give you people to follow their faith, not because y'all are in competition, but because he's trying to show you, he's trying to help you get to know your faith. Your, you don't know your faith. You don't know what you really capable of. You don't know um, that you can go into greater supernatural spaces and uh, God will put people in ahead of you or to disciple you or around you or just in the realm of faith who will expose you to greater measures of what your faith can really do. And so Jesus has them in this scenario that seems unfair, seems like it's beyond anything that we should really be having to deal with right now. I mean, we're doing a good job. We're being faithful disciples. And then he pulls them into this scenario where they have to figure out how to feed all these people and um, and he's pulling them into scenario and they are concerned because they're not realizing that it is a training session. Everybody say, my life, my life. is a training session. 
Oh, it is a training session. Many times we don't understand that we'll get into stuff or we'll run into things and we'll be like, Lord, uh, did you know this was getting ready to happen? Or Lord, uh, uh, you know, uh, do you see what's going on? Or remember how Peter said, Lord, careth thou not that we perish? And the whole time the Lord is like, no, this thing was not sent to bind you or to break you down. This thing was, was a, 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 the reason why I didn't take you around it or you didn't avoid it is because it was supposed to help you to get to know your faith. My goodness, you're supposed to get to know what your faith can really do. Watch this. The world has been dominating man. I'm, listen, I'm talking on, on behalf of Jesus. The world has been dominating man for too long. My God, the enemy, the devil has been dominating man for too long. And a part of the mission of Christ is to bring back dominion. Everybody say, I have dominion. A part of your achieving dominion is what you are able to accomplish by your faith, what you are able to get done in faith, what you are able to accumulate in faith, what you are able to manifest by faith. And so a part of our belief system that God is trying to develop is for us to really get to know our faith. Now, there is a lot of ignorance in faith. There is a lot of things that was taking place even in the scenario which was very positive where Jesus was going to feed the people. The beautiful thing is, is that Jesus knew his faith. Jesus knew, the scripture said, he knew what he would do. It, 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 was, it was wonderful. Watch this. It trains us and teaches us that at a certain time when we face challenges, the challenges will no longer shake us. Because we're going to get to a place when things hit us, we already know what to do. It, what, this is what I'm saying. That it wasn't that in the past you couldn't handle it. It was just you didn't know your faith the way you know it now in the past. And so it made you nervous. But once you get to know your faith, get to know what you can do, get to know what you can pull out of the spirit, then you no longer have a level of nervous. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Anything that you haven't really worked or, 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 or the way that you haven't really been able to get to know your faith, yes, there will be a level of nervousness. You will have a level of trepidation because you haven't learned God in a way that God has really brought you into a great place, but you don't know it. And so God, Jesus is trying to bring them along. He's saying, I know what I'm going to do, but you're attached to me. I'm trying to figure out, have you figured out what I'm going to do? Have you arrived to the place of dominion where these things that are taking place don't rattle you? Because when something hits you, you rise, you come up, you, or, or, or let me say it better, you transfigure. See, watch this. Whenever something natural was too much for Jesus to, for, for too much for anybody to handle, Jesus would go into the supernatural. Everybody say, I am supernatural. You are supernatural. You supernatural. He's supernatural. Getting a little nap, but he's supernatural. Because <laughs> Shari, you supernatural. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? See, watch this. I am supernatural. What does that mean? It means that, it means that, yes, natural things work a certain way and I work them, but then when things go into a place where they are overwhelming, where things go into a place that supersedes any natural measures, what you know they begin to say, well, we're evaluating what we have. We can't deal with this thing. Naturally, but Jesus was like, but I don't I'm, I'm not just pulling from my natural place. I'm pulling from faith. My faith knows what to do. Watch this. God has given us access to resources in the spirit that are beyond what we even can understand. And if we could only take the time to get to know our faith, my God, man, this thing is pressing upon me because sometimes we think the devil has put us in a 
disadvantage. We think, man, if this thing wasn't here, I could really get something done. If this thing wasn't here, I could really be successful. If I didn't have to deal with that, I really could make progress. Anybody ever felt like that? Sometimes you can feel like I just, if the God just go ahead and move this out of the way, I'd really be able to get something done. But the Lord is trying to tell you, um, I, ha I haven't moved it because I'm trying to help you get to know your faith. Your faith can overcome it. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so Jesus is trying to train us to get to know our faith. Now, it works in the positive where he's trying to raise our faith. Everybody say raise your faith. All right, to raise your faith means what? When it's time to be spiritual, when it's time to believe, rise to the occasion. When it's time to do a thing that you may be nervous to do, rise to the occasion. When it's time to go for something that you may be nervous to go for, rise to the occasion. Watch this. Yeah, you may be okay. You may have you may have experience using the faith of going to get the prophet water, but he's getting ready to ask for a meal now. And now let's raise your faith. Everybody say raise your faith. You got to raise your faith. What am I saying? What am I saying? That, hey, I may have experienced a certain thing in God. I may, God have, may have challenged me in a certain way. But now he's getting ready to challenge me in a new way. Now he's getting ready to pull upon me in ways he hadn't pulled upon me before. And now I got to raise my faith. Now I got to get to know that I really haven't exhausted what I really can do. I, I haven't exhausted it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so Jesus knew what he would do. My God, I I'm praying right now. Everybody lift your hands. I'm praying right now, my God, that you will help us to get to a place, my God, in things that we're nervous about, my God, that we will begin to face them in a level of dominance where we would know what we would do. In the name of Jesus, my God, right now, my God, hallelujah, I pray a, hell, a level of holy boldness, my God, where we begin to stick our chest out and, my God, straighten our shoulders, my God, and declare things things and places, my God, where we used to be nervous, my God, what could, because we know what we would do. I thank you for it. Mm, I thank you for it. You can put your hands down. Father, I thank you for that. And so then there is this cultivating of faith. There is this getting to know. There is almost this relationship where we are uh, coming into a greater measure of understanding who we are, uh, uh, what we are, what we can do. Uh, it's almost as if you have a car and it can go 180, it can go 250, but you only drive it 30 miles an hour. And it's like, you do know this thing can do a little bit more than what you're doing with it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Or somebody got a phone, they got a smartphone, and the smartphone can do everything. I mean, it can be a computer, it can do, it can hold all these apps, it can do all these things, but all they use it for is to make phone calls and do a couple of text messages. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's like, you just need a smip, uh, flip phone. You don't need no smartphone. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Watch this. Some people, so, sometimes we, because of certain scenarios or whatever it is, or who been speaking into our lives or whatever the case may be, we may think our faith is a flip phone, and we only want to use it for two things or we don't want to use it for three things and the Lord saying this thing is a smart device man this thing can able to go in there and do any kind of thing you want it to do you y'all understand what I'm trying to tell y'all listen I'm telling you that we got to get to know our faith our faith can do stuff watch this our faith can create a gift it didn't exist. It wasn't there. They didn't have it. And your faith can make it show up. Your faith can begin to create the DNA in the cell and begin to make the thing form. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And so listen, when Jesus was changing people's name and God changed people's name all the time in the scripture, when he would change their name, he was not just changing what people called him. He was changing who they really were word the essence of who they were y'all understand what I'm saying and so there was a trans he didn't just call Peter a rock he made him a rock my god what if you've been a flim flam man a jelly back or in and out and up and down y'all understand what I'm saying and the Lord made you a rock and but you got to get to know I got to get to know I've been I've been I've, I've been flimsy all my life watch this I've been saying one thing and doing another for a long time but now God really has made me a rock and and I got to get to know it. Watch this. I want to tell y'all this. I want to give you comfort in this, that the Lord 
is patient with you as you get to know your faith. Even in this scenario in Luke chapter 22, God knew through Jesus, and Jesus was conversing with Peter, Jesus knew the whole time Peter wasn't going to do nothing. <laughs> he knew it. Look at somebody say, he wasn't going to do nothing. Look, look at somebody and say, God knew you ain't going to do nothing. Just, just, just look at somebody and say, God knew you. Y'all remember you told us, Lord, I promise. If you do this, I will never do it again. God, like, he ain't going to do nothing. Y'all, did, 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 y'all understand what I'm saying? How many people don't broke 15 promises? I have. <laughs> and when you're a young Christian, you make too many. And then after a while, you be like, you know what? Let me just stop promising. Yeah, how about that? You know what I'm saying? Now, watch this, y'all. In Luke 22, Jesus knew Peter wasn't going to do nothing. He knew it. He knew he wasn't going to do nothing, but he knew what he called him. And so then when the scripture begins in Luke 22, Jesus begins to expose to them because he's he's delivering things. They're in the Last Supper. Uh, He's telling them things about the kingdom, telling them how they're going to sit at the table with him. And then he begins to tell Peter, he begins to bring him in some some spiritual insight. And he begins to say with him, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you. Satan has desired to get you. All right. Satan has desired to mess with your faith. But then he began to say, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. Watch this. See, you can't disappoint God if he already know what you're getting ready to do. Y'all see, you understand what I'm saying? See, sometimes we think we disappointed God. God said, I already knew what you were going to do. I know the end from the beginning. Can you imagine how you can, ma- how, how, how do you manage people when you know everything they're going to do? Sometimes we can only deal with people when we, when we don't know what they're going to do. But, but what if you knew what they were going to do and you still had to do the right thing? That would make God so great. And so at any rate, and so, and so Jesus knew he wasn't going to do anything. Now watch this. Jesus exposes a revelation. He said, Peter, Satan is after you. Satan desires to get you. I am on the other side. Right. Because it's almost as if you could see a picture of a court as if the, 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 the father is in heaven and there's a court and, 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 and some kind of way. Peter has entered into a place where the Satan c- can get access to him. And then Satan is on one side accusing Peter and Jesus on the other side advocating for him. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's how you see the picture. And so Jesus come back to Peter and say, hey, I don't pray for you. Hey, 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 Satan desire you and he want to get you. and He want to sit. You. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, what people don't understand is, is that this ain't no game. <laughs> like Satan after people. What did he say? He has a roaring line seeking whom he may devour. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so then, and so then Jesus bring him in on some insight and say, now he wants you now and he's trying to take you out. He said, but I pray for you that your faith will fail not. Watch this. He, did, he didn't stop what was getting ready to happen. He just prayed that he would come out of it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right. And so then after Jesus, look here in Luke 22, verse 31, because this is just amazing me. All right. Then after Jesus, it, it says, uh, it says, I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brother. In verse 33, and G- this is Peter. This is Peter, y'all. And Peter said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. What are you talking about right now? And see, this is the other side. This is the other side. See, when you don't know your faith, you'll try to do other people's faith. See, Jesus' faith was taking him to the cross. That was part of his assignment. That was part of what God wanted him to do. That was part of why he came into the world. Now, Peter think he getting ready to do this thing. He ain't getting ready to do nothing. But guess what the beautiful thing is? The Lord didn't assign him to do that. But when you don't know your faith, you will end up mimicking other people. Come on, anybody ever mimic somebody else? Anybody ever saw somebody else and what they were doing and say, I'm going to do that too. Anybody ever did that? Anybody ever bought something somebody else bought? <laughs> I'm, I'm, they got it, I'm gonna get it. Anybody else? You don't understand what I'm saying? You mimicking somebody else's faith that God didn't assign your faith to do what they're doing. And so then he telling him, I'm, I'm going to the jail with you, I'm going to the I'm going to death with you. And and and, and watch this. And look, listen how Jesus responded to him. And, and uh he said, I'm going to everything. I'm going, I'm going with you, Lord. And 
he said in verse 34, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before, uh, before thou thrice deny that thou knowest me. Y'all see that? He said before the, before the, before the uh, rooster crow, he like, you're going to deny me three times. And, you know, of course, in other uh, gospels, it talks about the, the rooster crowing twice. You're going to deny me. You, y'all understand what I'm saying? Jesus couldn't even, I mean, Jesus. Peter couldn't even make it through the night before he was going to deny him. The thing about this scripture that's so powerful is that, is that Peter didn't know his faith. He didn't know his faith and what he was supposed to do with it. But in the midst of his struggle, Jesus was praying for him. In the midst of him not knowing what to do with his faith, what his faith could do and what his faith couldn't do. Watch this. What his faith could handle and what his faith couldn't handle. See, when his faith couldn't handle what he was trying to do, he ran. He ran and went away sorrowful. And sometimes what the devil does is he, put, he, he allows us to go into a place of pride when it comes to our faith. And then we get ourselves in a jam. And then we got to go running with our tail tucked behind our leg. And now we don't want to use our faith no more. But I, there's a prayer out for you. Look at your neighbor and say, there's a prayer out for you. There's a prayer out for you. There's a prayer for you that, hey, hey, this, that this last failure will not be where you stay but there will be a conversion there will be a watch this there uh, uh, what the song say there will be glory after this there will be an after this there will be an after this time that's what he was trying to tell Peter and he was telling them ahead of time he was like now you you don't know your faith yet now you you doing good sometimes you here and there and if y'all just think about the story of Jesus if y'all just can just think about the story of Jesus all through it Peter was everywhere and now he was always involved he was always in the inner circle but he was everywhere, baby. I mean, one minute he telling Jesus that uh, that thou art the Christ. The next minute he telling them you ain't going to the cross. And Jesus having say, uh, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. Y'all know what I'm saying? Anybody ever been very accurate at some point? And then the other point, you were just off. You just off. That's because you don't know your faith. Come on, let's talk about this. Oh, my God. Listen, y'all. Sometimes, some, see, see, watch this. In perfection culture, you can't mature. In perfection culture, you can't grow because the minute you do something wrong, it makes you not want to do it no more. The minute you think that you prophesied right, the church, the church make you feel so bad that you don't want to get up again. But y'all got to understand that it ain't that you ain't got the gift. You just don't know your faith. You don't know. You don't know. You haven't cultivated it. And so, yes, sometimes you're going to be on. Sometimes you ain't going to be on. But if you just keep growing and keep getting to know it, after a while, there's going to be an Acts chapter 2. And you're going to be the one with the word that God has put. Oh, God, here we go. See, here's the thing, right? I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all the, Lord, the Lord put this thing in my spirit so strong. See, you got to know your faith, because y'all, you got to know it. You got to know that other people study like this. I don't study like that. You got to know other people flow with God like this. I don't flow with them like that. I know what he going to tell me, because see, see, watch this. Some people, they dig and they put stuff together a certain way. That's cool. But God, he put some on me. I can't shake it. He put some on me that I got to talk it until I get all the juices out of it and then I turn it loose. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so you got to know what, oh my God, watch this. You got the, you got the, oh God, you got the, uh, you got the, hmm, how you say it? You, know, you got the, you know, you know, you got the, you got to hug your faith. You know what I'm saying? You know, your faith got a perfume. Everybody say your faith got a perfume. Your faith got perfume. Somebody say, well, what do you mean your faith got perfume? That, that's what it says in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians. It says that, 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 that we as believers, we let out an aroma. We let off an aroma. That, that aroma is good smelling to the believer, but it is, it is, it is, it is, it is death smelling to those that are on their way to hell. And so your faith got an aroma. Guess what? You got to hug your faith. Everybody say, hug your faith. Hug your faith. Hug your faith. You got to hug it, man. Get that aroma on you. You got to find out what you can do. Many times, oh God, here we go. 
Many times people can't grow in their gift and grow in their faith because the person in front of them don't have the same kind of flow they got. And so then they're so intimidated because I don't flow like them. But your flow ain't they flow. You got to do what you do, baby. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, see, some people who, mm, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know what I'm saying? Some people teach. Some people, you see what I mean? They explain things different. Watch this. But if you get in the faith and you get to know your faith, it will still be anointed. It will still be powerful. It will still be effective. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It will still be good. And you got to fight. Everybody say fight to get in the faith. You got to, y'all, because sometimes when you begin to get into a rhythm, then all of a sudden the enemy will bring something in to throw you off. He'll bring in a person. He'll bring in something into the atmosphere, and it's to throw you off. But what you got to understand, your faith was already prepared for it. And sometimes you may have to just close your eyes and just go on in the faith now. Go on in the faith. Because sometimes we do too much stuff in the flesh. We don't even try to use our faith. We don't even try to go with that baby but I don't care you understand what I'm saying your faith can do some things your faith can get some things across your faith can make ways out of no way but you gotta use it Jesus my God he was upset with his disciples not because they called on him because the scriptures say anybody call on the Lord shall be saved but he was upset with them because they wouldn't use their own faith he was like wait a minute I put what in me I put it in you but you ain't using it. My God, I put the same thing in me to rebuke this storm and to calm this sea. I put it in you too, but instead of you using it, you coming and waking me up. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And God will develop faith so that he can take the church to the next dimension. So God will develop you. He will develop what's in you. He will develop what you can do. And as you rise in confidence, now you can take the church to the next dimension. Y'all remember Hebrews chapter 5? The scriptures say that the writer says to the Hebrews, he said, at the time you should be teachers, you're still needing that someone should teach you that be the principles of the faith. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so for too long, the enemy has been keeping people looking like they were going to be immature for their whole entire faith journey. But the devil is a liar. Everybody say the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Everybody yell, the devil is a lie. I'm walking in my faith. Come on, say the devil is a liar. I'm growing in my faith. The devil is a liar. I'm getting to know my faith. Come on, stand on your feet and say the devil is a liar. I will know my faith. Yeah, I will know my faith. My God. Hallelujah. The Lord has put something in us, and now he left it up to us to get to know it. If we don't get to know it, we're going to be doing stuff like Peter. We're going to be doing stuff that Peter would do. We're going to be doing stuff that, that we're going to be, we gonna, watch this. We're going to be, it's going to be time for us to, watch this, y'all. That was something Peter was supposed to be expressing in that moment, but he didn't know what it was. There was something Peter was supposed to be declaring in that moment, but he didn't know what it was. Watch this. There was something. Just play anything. Just play what you were playing. Okay. There was something. Listen to me, y'all. There was something Peter was supposed to be doing in that moment. Jesus didn't have time to train them and say, this is what you should be doing with your faith. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so in the midst of what was going on, uh, all Jesus could do was say, all right, he getting ready to go down bad. Let me recover him. Let me pray for him that he make it through this thing. But guess what? There was something Peter was really assigned to do in that moment. How do I know this? Because in the book of John, John was in the same scenario. Y'all don't worry about him. John was in the same scenario that Peter was in. This is what I'm saying. John, John was in 
John was in the same scenario that Peter was in. The exact same. All the other gospel writers, they don't know what John was doing. Now, all the other gospel writers, they didn't know what John was doing. You got to go to the book of John to find out that John was with Jesus the whole time. When he was getting judged, he was right there. When he was, when he was, when he was going from judgment hall to judgment hall, John was right there. Watch this. When he was on the cross, John was right there. I know he was right there because Jesus looked down at his mama while he was on the cross and he looked at John and said, behold, this your mama, uh, mama, this your son. There was something Peter could have been doing in faith, but he missed the opportunity because at that point he didn't know his faith. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Everybody raise your hand and say, Lord. Help me to know my faith. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, y'all. I'm telling you, God is going to help us. Come on, everybody say it again. Lord, help me to know my faith. Listen, God has put some great things in us. Some things, some spiritual things in us. What if, what if, Sister Jackson, God put in you the ability to take bread, break it, and feed 5,000? What if? We just got to get to know our faith. What if, what if, see, we don't know what we can do. We don't know. We, 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 we got to get to know it. We got to get to know it. We got to get to know it. And watch this. If we stay out of pride, see, watch this. Now, pride go both ways. Pride won't let you go after it because you're trying to protect your image. And then pride to have you doing stuff that's outside of what God made your faith to do. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And when Peter was trying to reach, he trying to reach to Jesus' status. Jesus was like, you can't do my status, man. I'm going to be getting beat, and you going to be denying me. Let me ask you a question. Come on, let's just finish this good. What did they do to Peter? Did they beat him? Now, this man, now this is how you know you out of place. They ain't doing that to him. All they said was, ain't you one of him? No, no, no. You got to be one of them. No, 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 no. <laughs> it ain't like they were like standing in front of them with a whip. I know you one of them. I'm getting ready to pop you. Now, I ain't doc. Now, I ain't. You know what I'm saying? Now, watch this, y'all. Paul gets beat all the time. They let him out of baskets. He getting in the shipwrecks. How is he able to manage? He knew his faith. He knew. I can manage this. And what he say? What he say? I've learned how to abase and how to abound. I learned how my faith can manage the lows and the highs. Everybody say, my faith can manage the lows and the highs. It can. Can you imagine? See, this is why the church is going through struggles. Because the church has preached to people that they're only going to be in highs. And then when COVID hit and everybody started going through a major low or individually when people start going through low, the church don't got no word for it. Am I right about it? And then, then people begin to watch this. Listen to what he said. I'm praying for you that your faith fell not. What do we need faith for? To believe God. So then when stuff start going low, people stop believing God because of what been preached. But, but Paul was saying, you gotta know how to manage the highs and the lows. You gotta manage, watch this. You gotta, man, you gotta know how to manage when they love you and when they hate you. You gotta know how to manage when ain't nobody coming around and when everybody coming around. You gotta know how to manage it. Anybody right about it? Everybody say, know your faith. Know your faith. You gotta know your faith. Let's pray. Everybody close your eyes. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. You put a strong belief system in us. And that's the way you communicate. You talk to us through our faith. 
you tell us things you challenge us you walk us down the road you give us word you inspire us my god you move us from one phase and one level to the next we thank you watch this you assign us to hard things because you know we can handle them ah god we give your name the praise thank you lord for your people getting to know your faith getting to know the faith that's in them i thank you for going from faith to faith and glory to glory right now in the name of jesus we give your name the praise for it now in jesus name amen amen everybody say amen come on clap your hands and say amen amen